what's interesting is really the the genesis of this because some of these battles become public some of them are very much behind the scenes and it's just influencing management you mentioned the the turnover especially the leadership turnover not just um, within Salesforce, but some of the divisions like Slack, Stuart Butterfield has stepped back. So is that the genesis here of what has attracted the interest of Elliot management? Of Elliot is just a, a great best-in-class company that has fallen on some hard times. And I don't know the specific ideas that he has yet about what needs to be done. Sometimes these campaigns by activist investors are wrapped up very quickly in a few weeks. And uh, they, they say, oh, I'm very happy. We have the cooperation of the board and the CEO and blah, 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 blah. And they fade off into the sunset and quit making noise. And uh, and, and then uh, their shares appreciate. Sometimes uh, an activist investor will get into a situation where the company maybe is not savable. You know, uh, despite all the pressure and buttons they can push, you still can't um, make a horse produce uh, or a cow produce Coca-Cola. That that does not seem to be the case with Salesforce. Not that I'm on the marketing team here, but it does feel ubiquitous, and it has had a successful run from a profit point of view. I think you're right. It, it, like I said, it's a best in class, uh, whatever you call it, workplace solutions company, uh, enterprise resource management, that kind of stuff. SaaS, sure. Yeah. I mean, so talk a bit about what to expect from here. First of all, sometimes when a shareholder activist goes in, um, it's a signal for the rest of us, not me, of course, since I don't invest in these stocks, to go in as well. Um, or is it sometimes a signal that it's too late and to let it play out? No, no, not at all. I think you can make a very good living if you follow very good investors into positions that they own. Uh, in many cases, most cases, you know, they're not in and out in the same day. They're not day trading these things. Uh, they might be swing trading them. And there is the danger, of course, that the 13F, which only needs to be filed every, uh, every three months, might be a little bit stale with this information by the time you receive it. So in the Forbes Billionaire Investor, what we do is look for clusters, you know, uh, of several billionaires who are going into a stock and if they all have different methodologies and different criteria for what constitutes a good stock, if you see that consensus of opinion, and then you do your homework a little bit more on, you know, not that we know any better than, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, we see patterns. You see patterns. You're watching. You see patterns developing. You're like, oh, well, there must be something there. And uh, yes. So, no, I don't, I don't view as, as seeing a, a guy go into a stock like uh, Singer is with uh, salesforce.com and say, oh, good for him, but uh, it's already jumped on the news. I don't want, you know, it's too late for me. No, not really. Because if, if, if what he's doing works out, um, you know, the returns will be a lot better than what you've already seen. Is there a cluster of activity here? Because uh, to your point, oftentimes I'm thinking Dan Loeb, David Einhorn, there, there are many players in this space. They watch what each other does sometimes they'll take the opposite stance, and sometimes it's an ego game. Um, to what extent are we seeing other billionaires interested in Salesforce as a um, investment proposition? Uh, you know Ken Fisher from the commercials. You do better when we do better, or vice versa. Fisher yes. Investments, uh, Fisher Asset Management still has uh, almost uh, two billion dollars worth of stock, but they in Salesforce. But in the last quarter, they sold off almost $3 billion worth. So maybe he'll be coming back into it later, but that was definitely probably a good move by Ken Fisher to get out of Salesforce before it, it I don't know if you want to say it tanked. Yeah, it tanked. Um, what does tanked mean? Give us some perspective on how Salesforce is done. Well, uh, over the past, um, let me pull it up for you, show you exactly, uh, CRM. Uh, back in August, it was at $190. It got down to 130, and it's actually back up to 155. If you pull it up, nice little jump uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, and it's back above its 200 day. It's back above its 50 day moving average, uh, chugging in on its 200 day. So, um, but even earlier, let's see. Wait, one year ago, we're talking about. I think it was over 200 dollars. Yes, it, oh my gosh, yes it was. Well, talk about how how what what is tanking? Okay, here's. Okay, Diane, here's what's tanking. Back in November 
of 2021, Salesforce was above $310 per share. And in December, it got down to 125 and it's back up to 155 now. So we're talking about a decline still of 50% from its highs.